Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Hello learners, my name is Stephen Kariungi and we'll continue with our topic of discussion and the topic is structure and bonding. So today I would like us to uh, study the different types of bonds. Uh, the types of bonds, uh, basically there are three types of bonds. One, we have ionic bond, also known as electrovalent bond. And uh, we can say that uh, this is a type of bond formed when there is complete transfer of electrons from one atom to another. So is a type of bond formed when there is a complete transfer of electrons. So the, thing, the key thing is transfer of electrons from one atom to another. In other words, what we are saying is that one atom will lose electrons and the other one will gain electrons. So basically some uh, electrons will be transferred from one atom to another. So that's what we are saying. And this are uh, leading to formation of a positively and negatively charged ion. So is a type of bond that is uh, formed between uh, uh, when there is a complete transfer of electrons from one atom to another leading to formation of a positively and a negatively charged ion or ions. So we can say that uh, this bond is commonly found between a metal and a non-metal because we know that basically metals will lose electrons and then the non-metals will gain those electrons. So there will be a transfer of electrons from the metal to the non-metal. So as a result of that, the metal becomes positively charged and the non-metal becomes negatively charged. And then the attraction between the two creates an ionic bond. So we can say that um, this is commonly found when a metal combines with a non-metal. And you can see that during ion formation, this is just something that we are going back to something that we've already learned. Uh, during ion formation, metals lose electrons to form positively charged ions. They lose electrons to form positively charged ions, also known as cations. On the other hand, Non-metals gain electrons. Non-metals gain electrons uh, to form negatively charged ions. Known as anions. So from that, we can be able to distinguish what are cations and what are anions. Cations are the positively charged ions, while the anions are the negatively charged ions. The positively charged ions 
come from uh, metals losing electrons. And the negatively charged ions come from the non-metals gaining electrons. So when the non-metals gain electrons, they are basically gaining negative charges. Yeah? So if they are gaining negative charges, they become negatively charged. But if the metals are losing the negative, uh, or they are losing the negative electrons, then they become positively, uh, positively uh, charged. So we'll take an example. Take an example of this ionic uh, bonding. We can say that a sodium atom, which is Na, has 11 electrons arranged as 2, 8, 1. And therefore, during ion formation, it requires to lose one electron. It requires to lose one electron. So sodium has 281 as the electron arrangement, electron configuration. Uh, then we are saying that it needs to lose that one outermost uh, electron to form a positively, because it is losing, to form a positively charged sodium ion positively charged sodium ion that is indicated as 28 no that is indicated as na positive with an electron configuration configuration is the same as electron arrangement of 28 so what we have said is that uh, initially sodium was uh, 281, it had 11 electrons, but during ion formation it's going to lose one electron and the arrangement is now 28 or the arrangement now becomes 28. So because there is a negative, uh, there's a, an, an electron or a negative charge that has been lost, then the overall charge becomes positive because now the protons are more than the electrons by one. And you can say that uh, uh, because the number of protons remain the same, then the overall charge of the ion is positive, is positive one. Because there is an excess of one proton. Having lost one electron, remember initially the protons and the electrons were the same in number. But when you lose an electron, the protons are more by one. So that shows that uh, there is a positive one that is created somewhere. We can also have another example that uh, a chlorine atom, which is Cl, has 17 electrons arranged as 287. Arranged as 287. And therefore, during ion formation, it needs to gain one electron. It needs to gain one electron to attain a stable arrangement. So you're saying that during ion formation, it requires to gain one electron 
to attain a stable electron configuration to attain a stable electron configuration of 288 so when it gains one it, uh, one electron it becomes 288 uh, because of that now e extra electron that has been gained the overall charge becomes negative so the overall charge for the chloride ion it's now a chloride ion we don't call it chlorine ion it's a chloride ion is negative that's why we indicated as cl negative so the overall charge for the chloride ion is negative so we are going to illustrate that in form of a, a diagram so we're going to have a diagrammatic illustration of a sodium atom losing an electron a chlorine atom gaining an electron so a sodium atom has 11 protons and 12 neutrons we are told that it has 11 electrons we arrange them so that is the sodium atom na the arrangement is 281 so we have two in the first energy level eight in the second energy level and one in the third energy level then we go to a chlorine it combines with a chlorine atom Chlorine has 17 protons, 18 neutrons. So we can use the dot, dots here. 2, 8. So this is chlorine atom. 287. So what will happen is that uh, the one electron that is lost by sodium or the one valence electron lost by sodium is the one that will be attracted by chlorine or is the one that will be gained by chlorine uh, such that after that the sodium now will have only 2,8 as the electron arrangement. The number of protons remain 11 and neutrons remain 12. So the nucleus is not affected. Whatever is in the nucleus remains the same. So it's only the outermost electrons that are affected. So that is 2,8. And now that it has uh, lost one electron, and the electrons are now 8 against 11 protons. That means that this particle here has a positive charge because of the e extra protons. Extra proton. The electrons are 10, the protons are 11. One extra proton. So we'll... Uh, continue with the diagram so we'll now show chlorine after it has gained now the electron so we are saying the nucleus remains the same 17 p 18 n the first energy level the second and the third So we, we had it like that, but now this electron has 
been uh, attracted there it has been gained here so we put a cross to show that it is from sodium so whatever we have here it now has 17 protons and 18 electrons so there is an excess of one electron so the charge becomes negative protons are 17 electrons are 18 so one extra electron negative charge here one extra proton positive charge so this is a sodium ion it has a charge this is a chloride ion it has a charge so this is na positive this is cl negative and when now you combine the two you get sodium chloride sodium chloride which is na cl so the positive charge in sodium cancels with the negative charge in the chloride so when they come together the charges cancel each other so sodium chloride is written as that so that is the formula for sodium chloride and therefore we can say that therefore can say that therefore sodium chloride is an ionic compound it's an ionic compound because it is made up of ions that are bonded together by ionic uh, bonds so at that point we can have an assignment so the assignment the first question uh, what is an ionic bond and number two using a diagrammatic illustration show bonding in potassium chloride so we'll stop there until next time goodbye